Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 4. Today, we begin work on the base area. We're going to be turning this little patch of land behind us here into some form of hole that goes very far down and very, very far up as well. It might not look like much right now, but I do have some pretty fun plans for the main base this season, so I hope you're looking forward to it. We do need to wrap up the raid farm because I kind of left it slightly broken in the last episode so we need to head over there and just kind of fix it make sure it's up and running and then that'll actually give us a lot more totems and good things to sell on the server so the redstone on the raid farm really broke early on so uh all of this is just full of junk it, it didn't even didn't even try to withstand it just like all all the junk went into here okay so we're gonna pull a trick from the last episode and pull everything of use out of these chests and then just like break the chest. I used the raid farm for like a while, so this is actually a lot of loot. And now for the funnest part of this whole ordeal, we get to break all of the chests. Just many, many items. Although all of this is complete trash, so none of it matters at all. Slight, slight frame drop, it's fine, don't worry about it. Okay, in theory, all of this is actually fixed and fully functional probably so we need to go ahead and turn on the farm at this point we just need to test it ever so slightly to see what happens <laughs> i have no trust in the system at this point it's broken every time that we've tried to use it the trident killer is not going round and round so that means part of this is not functioning how it should no observer right there but that would do it I happen to have three observers in my inventory. That's probably where one of them came from right you, you do not want to do work on a raid farm that is actively full of mobs that just sounds like a, all of the bad ideas that you'd have combined into one. I'm a professional Minecrafter. I just forget how to do the professional Minecrafter sometimes. And here goes the items falling down. And we're also getting experience now as well. There you go. You see, I know how to make a, a raid farm work. Y'all doubted me. You mistrusted me. Probably for good reason. But I proved you wrong in the end. That's what matters. Ha 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 ha. Now it's time for the moment of truth. We need to make sure that uh, the stuff didn't break. That's probably fine. I'm not going to question that. That one's probably fine. Not going to question that. Not questioning it. Okay, everything else is actually working as it should. These ones are mob heads, so those shouldn't have anything. Sticks and lots of arrows. And then all the extra junk went over here. Beautiful. Looking good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So the rain farm is officially actually properly done and working and fully functional with no problems. Until it breaks again. But that's not, that's not a worry right now. <laughs> And with that, Raid Farm V7 it does appear to be working just fine. So, yay, I successfully did it. I probably should have just done all this in creative and saved so much time, but it's kind of fun testing it out in survival as well. However, we have actually started selling a bunch of our totems, so I'm going to go ahead and take back another shulker box to spawn. I always forget how many totems these things make. There's just so many. We're never going to run out. I really need to do an overnight AFK session here, though, just to, like, really drive it home and get as many items as possible. 1.18.3 is coming soon, and it is going to give a huge nerf to all the raid farms. Okay, new shop prices are as follow. All books are 1 to 3 diamonds each. We got emeralds, 2.5 stacks per diamond, because now we're going to be farming these things like crazy. Copper, five stacks per diamond. I just want to sell this stuff. We got so much of it. So this mysterious button has showed up in the base. And uh, it has some fairly obvious redstone that is slightly hidden underneath it. So we're going to press the button. It's just a beetroot. <laughs> he put all these blocks down here just to hide the, the beetroot dispenser. It's just, it's just a beetroot dispenser. <laughs> Psychological warfare is what we're getting into now, huh? I see how it is. I see how it is. This demands revenge. Demands it. So, it is officially time to break ground on the base. And the base location is going to be right around this area. Basically, right on the center of that little like pile of logs basically so we're going to be doing a chunk aligned base because there's going to be a lot of farms and it's just going to be extra helpful to have everything be chunk aligned yeah we're going to be basically mining out this two by two of chunks so it's going to be like a 32 by 32 hole going very far down it's going to be a very tall base going very far up and very far down Sloy. so there's a crab in my house Co come to my house where, where is this crab that you speak of Inside the house. There's a literal crab inside of your house. I cannot <laughs> stress this enough. You yep. just walk in and there's crab. 
To start off the day right, uh, Mr. Zloy has left us a care package for the base. And, uh, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Don't tell Zloy that you need something. Because then he just, like, comes up and he just gives you five chests of it. I told him that I needed some white concrete. And, uh, here we are. Five chests later. I even have, like, three chests, four chests myself. That's probably gonna be enough for the base. But, uh, we need to get a lot more done on this area. Jeez, oh my. We don't need to convert, like, any of this by hand. So that's, that's the pro. Jeez, this must have taken him so long. This, this must have taken hours. Gotta show some love to Zloy. Our potato brother from another mother. We've gotten down to the level where there's no haste. And we're still 135 blocks in the air. Plus 64. So, what is that? 184? No. Uh, what, 188? Oh my. Oh my. Mountains are tall, guys. Don't base on top of a mountain if you want to make a hole. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be here for a while. Three eternity later. We're finally almost down to deep slate level. And hey, look at that! It goes into a giant cave! I definitely didn't know that that was there in advance. Yay! We just skipped 30 blocks of mining. That's great. Down, down, down we go. Hey, bedrock level. So we've dug a couple blocks down. Do I have any rockets? Okay, good, I do. I was about to say, if I went all the way down here with no rockets, that'd be shameful. So it takes four rockets to get from the bottom all the way up to the top. That was three. This one's four. Actually, it takes five. It takes six rockets. There we go. Ugh, jeez. That, that's a hole. There's clouds going through my hole. Look, at get out of there, cloud. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I told that cloud who's boss. I didn't know there was going to be clouds going through my base. So I just feel like taking a little, little drop today. Just a little fall. Ah! <laughs> okay, that's the first legit totem of the season that I popped. Cool. Nearly died. It's fine. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. I got health insurance. Just kidding, this is America. You know what, we need a new hole for the beacon and I'm just gonna dig straight down. You know what, I'm gonna yellow this thing. I ain't fearful. Now that the beacon is in place and I don't have enough rockets to get out of here or an ender chest, <laughs> we need to figure out the next step in this. I think we need to dig down each corner of our area. That way we know the entire like zone that we need to mine out. Cause this entire thing, all the way from bedrock to build height, is gonna be the base. The whole thing. It all needs to be dug out, emptified, and turned into a base. Yeah, that's why I chose the base above a giant cave. Look how much less mining we need to do. I'm already like 30% done for the negative coordinates. This is great. Yeah, so in addition to all the concrete that Zloid has left us, we also have all the sand and all this gravel and all of this stuff up here that we've collected on streams as well. Kind of ridiculous. Like, we, we have a lot of resources for the base now. This this is clearly a good use of our time. <laughs> this is the proper order of things. And then we'll know if someone comes in here and kills them again, because they won't have their names. Hey, did someone fill in the crater down there? Because that was not like that. There's a person down there actively filling it in. That That's an active war zone, I'll have you know. They didn't clean up Tiz Tom's hands, so I appreciate that at least. Leaving, leaving little remnants to remind people. But, uh, who exactly is that? And now they're gone. Well, we gotta check this out, because that's not somebody that I have ever seen. And they didn't have a name tag either. They're not doing a very good job of filling this in, are they? <laughs> what is up with this? Okay, where did they go? Hello? Mr. Person? Well, this area looks terrible. It's almost like something blew up here. Well, they just straight up disappeared then. Okay. Hmm. Mysterious. Right, so now that we've gotten the center of this thing mined out, and we also have our beacon over here, which you definitely cannot see the beacon beam of, and the actual beacon itself is also unrendered as well. But we still got the haste effect because of Bedrock Edition. We've done the math. The top of the base is at 224-ish, and the bottom of it is at negative 60, so that's, you know, 284 meters <laughs> that we need to mine out. No big deal! It's just literally above and below the cloud layer. Just the whole, it's just the whole thing. Hey, at least we're getting paid for the job. I mean, look at that, nine diamonds. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> Zloy strikes again. He just delivered another, <laughs> another two chests. Oh my God. What a mad lad. 
I don't even know. How did he even get it into my inventory? Two stacks in our inventory without me even noticing. He must have dropped it down on me as I was mining. What a butt. Okay, so we have our five holes going down to the bottom of the world now. And uh, you legitimately can't even see the bottom of the world. Right. Well, that's... That's concerning. I might have to ask Foxy to turn up the server render distance just so I can see the bottom of base. I hadn't considered that. We are high enough up that the bottom of the world is outside of render distance. Okay then, right. Well, as I was gonna say, we need to uh, start taking down some levels of this thing. <laughs> uh, I'm regretting this project every second that I start it. With the power of the furnace god, you shall be repaired. Pick Ashley. Just one potato. <laughs> Let's repair the other one while we're here as well. Ta-da! And then we need just a little bit more experience. Oh, one level too much. So my basic idea for the base is we're going to be building the entire thing from bedrock to build height. All the way from the bottom of the world, all the way to the top of the world. And that entire thing is going to have farms and contraptions and redstone going all the way up and down it. And then ideally, if there is a good way to do it... I would like to remove the bedrock that's very all the way down at the bottom that you can't even see because it's at a render distance. Have it go straight to the void. We can like build a mini game into our base uh, where you like try to fall down as far as you can without falling into the void. And then we can do some other fun things as well. It's going to be interesting having to build a base on this scale with this much verticality in it because it's going to be literally the most vertical that you can get a base. Uh, I have a little bit of experience with this with the season two bases, the chunk tower, that was good experience for this, and then also just like the main farming area of bases. I think we can do it pretty well, but we also have to mine out another 268 levels until we reach bedrock. <laughs> I do not know of any good ways to break bedrock on bedrock edition at the moment besides dark oak trees, and that's a pretty terrible way of doing things. Uh, so if you know of a way to break bedrock on like a mass scale, Please send it my way, because uh, we got, you know, possibly a 32 by 32 hole that needs to be dug. At the minimum, I'd like to have, like, a, an 8 by 8 hole through the bedrock. I think that would be pretty cool. But if there's a good way of breaking bedrock, I'll just remove the whole thing. Either way, it's going to be a lot of pain, probably. I go away for one second, and suddenly we have all of the mobs. I should build a mob farm in the base. That's what I should do. That would be a good thing. Where would I put it? That's a future silent problem. We'll, we'll put it somewhere. Zloy's gonna have a proper hard time leaving me any concrete now. Haha. -ha. This is this is what I like to see. There you go. But yeah, we've actually made a fair amount of progress in the last hour or two of mining this. And we still have an, an additional 264 layers to go. So I've done some math and I've done some designing and creative. This concrete circle right here is basically going to be in the entire size of the base going from bedrock all the way to build height. And the parts of the base that are on the surface are of course going to be much larger like going beyond this circle. We're also going to have a whole bunch of farms and redstone and stuff inside the base so that's going to be going outside of the circle underground as well. Now this circle is 80 blocks in circumference I believe and it's a 31 by 31 circle so as you can see we don't actually need to mine out all these corners and that's a very good thing because if we wanted to mine out this entire 32 hole going all the way down to bedrock that would be 287,744 blocks we would need to mine but if we're not mining out these corners then we only need to mine out 229,600 blocks yeah, so not nearly as bad as you can see. <laughs> we just saved ourselves 58,000 blocks of mining just by cutting off these corners here, which is fantastic. That's going to save hours and hours and hours of work. Speaking of large numbers, you might think all those chests of concrete is going to be enough, but 
it's actually not. It's about half as much. Let's head over to Creator for a second, and I'll show you some of my preliminary plans for the base. So right now, we're on a creative copy of the Truly Bedrock Seed, and the basic idea for the base is to have somewhat of a futuristic, modern, alien-looking base, whatever that might mean to you. So everything I'm about to show you is, like, super preliminary and up for changes, but please let me know what you think about it. So the above ground part of the base might look something like that, that's just like a general outline still very much open to modification originally the center of the base was only going to be this big but that's not nearly big enough if you're digging a giant hole you may as well make it like actually impressive right I'm also planning on having this like laser like thing going down the middle of the base kind of acting like the laser beam that's mining out the hole and then these rings would be sort of like energy in quotes that are you know, kind of going around the base. That's what I mean by futuristic. I'm currently playing around with a little mock-up of the cylinder that goes from build height to bedrock, and this is where I'm kind of playing around with having some spirals on the edges, because that would look pretty cool as you're like flying down the entire build and falling down it. And I'm trying to figure out how to get rooms into the sides of the walls, because all of the different farms and stuff are going to be going in these kind of like rooms. And of course, I need to figure out how to make those like work with the build. I'm I'm thinking having these diagonal openings might not be too bad of an idea. So we can have a kind of this cool little diagonal opening. It goes in and then you can have a farm on the left and a farm on the right. That way everything is nice and chunk aligned. And then of course we can clear out this room as much as we need to because of course we have a giant mountain range that we can mine out. And the further down that we go, the less we need to worry about hitting things. So we have a lot of different opportunity to build cool things in this area. I just need to figure out like the specific details of what exactly is happening here and there. But if you got any ideas or feedbacks or suggestions or maybe some like inspiration pictures that you want to send my way, let me know. You can always send stuff to me on Discord or on Twitter or, you know, just leave a comment on the video. But I kind of like the ideas that I've gotten here as preliminary as they are. And regarding the amount of resources that we're going to need with an 80 block circumference, that is 281 blocks from top to bottom that is two and a half stacks of blocks per like you know line going from top to bottom and that means that we need 22,480 blocks just for the outside of the cylinder what you've seen marked out here that is 351 stacks or 13 shulkers of concrete powder we probably already have about 11 or so shulkers of concrete powder, so honestly, we're doing super good. Zloy is super clutch with the seven shulkers that he's given us already. That is like over half of what we need for this entire base. That is crazy. I just came back onto the server to do a little bit of mining, and we don't have any haste. What, what happened to the haste? Hello? Beacon! Is it down there? You legitimately can't even see it due to the render distance. I'm definitely gonna die if I do this. Okay, hold on. We need to run into the wall. <laughs> Where is our beacon? I see. It's just straight up. Straight up not here. Oh, it's here now. Tiz was here. Potatoes drool. Beats roll. Huh. It's just right here. So, I guess that's not too big of a deal? <laughs> You've cost me one iron, Tiz Tom. How dare ya? Also, there's a very convenient lava pool right over here. I know exactly where all these beetroots are going. Haha, -ha, take that. You know what? We really need to get back at Tiz Tom. We got back at Foxy, but we need to get back at Tiz Tom. Maybe next episode. Not gonna lie, having these little edges on the corners kind of kind of nice. We might be able to do something with that. Maybe we can integrate that into the base at like this layer up here or something. Either way, we have a lot of work to do on this project. I'm probably going to end up recruiting some people on the server to help me mine, because we got to mine all of this. <laughs> ah, it keeps on going. Literally, hundreds of blocks <laughs> need to be mined. No, I'm sorry, hundreds of thousands of blocks need to be mined. So, yeah, we're gonna end up recruiting some people on the server and paying them and doing some work trade, probably, and then maybe giving them some cuts of our farms and resources. It's gonna be a good one. I'm actually really looking forward to this project, and hopefully you guys are as well. If you have any ideas, suggestions, feedbacks, or criticisms, let me know in the comment section down below. But otherwise, that's gonna do it for today's episode. If you did enjoy, then consider subscribing. That way you don't miss future ones. Maybe leave a like on the video as well, as it helps out the video and the channel a ton. And I'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one. 
And then there was silence.